What's up, Prime Fam? We are back with the workout training vlogs. I know you guys love these voiceovers, so we're gonna dive into my lower body hypertrophy day here from our Prime program, one of our group coaching programs over at prime-strength.com. It's a program aimed at powerlifting, bodybuilding, and general athleticism and functionality. You guys are gonna see all the crazy fun variations I'm doing while still incorporating my powerlifting and bodybuilding work. Started the day off at 5.30 a.m. on this training day, and I've been training actually very early in the morning. Started off with some jump rope and then got into my dynamic warm-ups, and there's a reason I mentioned the time of day. I'll get into that, but we're gonna give you guys two huge tips today that really, I think, are very beneficial that instantly can improve your lifting. And we're gonna dive right into it. Tip number one is actually gonna be to do a very fast pace dynamic warm up. This is something I've added in in the last months of my training that I've really actually kind of changed my mindset on uh, over the last year. I really for a bit honestly fell into the camp of just warm up on the barbell and do a little bit of movement prep in between sets for you know joints that might need some mobilization. But I actually have completely disregarded that mindset moving or, or for the last few months. And you can see me here doing a bunch of hip rotation work. So we're gonna show you some T-spine rotation I'm doing some ankle mobilizations, but everything's really dynamic. I'm always pulsing, moving, or doing something to get my heart rate extremely elevated. By the time I was done with this, even at 5.30 in the morning in 45 degree weather, and this gym is cold, uh, I was sweating, and I end up taking my, my shirt off there. Like always, I always take off the shirt. Gotta show the gains, right? But um, I move really quickly through this. I got this workout done in 10 minutes, five, mi five minutes of rigorous jump roping, and then five minutes of pre-workout dynamic movement preparation. And this stuff makes me feel so much better. I move so much better on the barbell. And I've really consolidated the best times and ways of mobilizing and moving better and warming up properly. I do post-workout stretching. Uh, I do pre-workout dynamic mobility work. And I even do some at-home work as well. So that's kind of how I start my days. And I, I really can't stress enough how important it is to get down some kind of really fast-paced dynamic warm-up and get your heart rate up. And then even when I approach the barbell here, I attack these sets really fast paced. I got up to this 315 here in about maybe five or six minutes, really short rest periods, which this is a lightweight for me. If it was heavier, it'd probably take a little bit longer, but this is one of my first, uh, I, it's almost like a working set. I ended up going a little bit heavier after this for my three sets of nine on high bar squats. And you guys are gonna see the pace I'm keeping to this workout. And that brings me to tip number two. I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep a fast pace to your workout and to get into what I call a workout flow or a flow state. So this is something I did for years and kind of stopped doing because of powerlifting. And in recent times, I've really gone back to this old meta or this old idea of essentially trying to keep extremely fast paced workouts on all my secondary or tertiary days. And then on my like primary powerlifting days, I'm still resting a long time, although not as long as before and moving a little slower. I mean, you can even see the way I'm attacking these high bar squats is really fast paced. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing your sets like this. I'm really advanced and my technique is locked in enough to perform my movements like that, but I'm more so referring to the rest times. So we're gonna come back to that point here in a second. I wanna explain this next exercise before I finish that thought. Some big, thick bitch trap bar dead. So I'm doing some trap bar deficit deads there. Four inch deficit with the low handles, beltless. These things are killer. They're great for work capacity because the range of motion is extremely long. These are so grueling and tiring, which will hugely improve my work capacity, allow me to handle higher levels of stress with my powerlifting training and athleticism. Uh, beyond that, you're also training a ton of core with this because you're in such a compromised position in the bottom and you're going beltless. These are amazing. They're also really hard on the grip. You can see I had to reset my grip there. So training that grip, which always gives me problems, just all around a bad ass exercise. And look at that, that glistening sweat. Even in a, in a pretty cold gym, guys, my body is just constantly elevated because I'm moving, moving, moving. Even having to film all this for you guys, I'm keeping such a fast pace. And I, again, I can't stress enough how important that is 
for a host of reasons. One, it trains your work capacity. Two, you, I just promise you, try it. You'll really enjoy it. You'll feel way better with your workouts. And three, it does not compromise strength as much as you would think, actually at all. Like you tend to move better like this. And the one thing I find it does is it really helps me kind of check my ego and not go too heavy on this day. That way I kind of save it for the days I am supposed to go heavy on, which is really more geared towards my weekend sessions. Um, after those deficit trap bar deads, working on end range mobility and, and um, tons of quad hypertrophy here in a squat specific pattern. So SSB 1.5 squats here. Uh, Kristen's actually been doing these a lot too. If you guys follow her on Instagram, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen her uh, doing these. And these are amazing at producing quad hypertrophy in a squat specific pattern. I elevate my heels a little extra. I take a closer stance. I go beltless and sleeveless. And they're just so amazing at you know annihilating your quads while also working core and a squat specific pattern. I actually like this more as an accessory. I don't really think of it as a main movement. Um, you can see there I was just vibing out to the music. The, the whole workout was so good because I was just zoned in. I finished this entire workout in an hour and 15 minutes with the warm up and post workout stretching, which I'll uh, kind of show a little bit of. It was an hour and 40 minutes in total. So, uh, or no, 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 I'm sorry, an hour and 35 minutes. I think that's what it was. Um, but actual workout time, according to my Apple Watch, was an hour and 15 minutes. Um, after those SSBs, the 1.5 squats, got into these band assisted Nordic curls. By the way, when you do these, make sure you flex the hips a little bit like I'm doing. Contrary to how everyone wants to do them, do not do these with straight hips. This will target your low hamstrings much more, which is the purpose of this exercise. And yes, you should do them assisted because I can deadlift over 700 pounds and I can leg curl a lot. And I know if I can't do these unassisted, very few of you can. Uh, I see a lot of people butcher this exercise. So form and cadence is everything here. Um, but anyway, getting back to my original point, the reason I really like that, that fast paced kind of flow state during these workouts, uh, for lack of a better term, and I don't mean to make it sound so esoteric, is it really just helps on so many different fronts from your execution of the lifts to keeping your, your work capacity and heart rate up to allowing you to really check the ego. And honestly, it's just a much more enjoyable way for me to train personally. Um, and, and by the time I leave the gym, I'm getting so many more adaptations than just the strength. And it really doesn't compromise your strength as long as you slowly build your way up to it. Um, doing some oblique crunches here. These are really good at resetting the hips. So my right QL is always like super tensed up and this always loosens it right up and gets my obliques kind of functioning the way I want them to function. You can see I was dead and then I hopped right into these TRX Copenhagen planks. So if you guys are running the Prime program, any of you guys, I know Tushar and a few of our guys, Chase, what's up guys? Few of you guys were brave enough to try out this program instead of just running the basic run of the mill powerlifting programs out there and stuff, which we do actually have an SPD program, it's awesome. And we also have a fusion program, which is our um, bodybuilding powerlifting hybrid program. But I like training everything these days. And honestly, I just enjoy it so much. It actually helps my powerlifting out because I don't get bored with it. You can see these were super hard for me. Got done after six reps, kicked it off and switched over to the other leg and uh, started working on um, you know, so I'm progressing these. Last block I was doing these static off a stable bench. Now I'm doing these off the TRX straps and the instability factor here is so much harder. But this is a really good way to keep healthy adductors so when you're doing heavy squats you don't tear them like I have done a million times and every time I stop doing these and I get lazy, my adductors get problems again. So I'm really big on keeping up on this stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, finished up here with this uh, core work. Uh, this is a core exercise as well as an adductor exercise. You're working oblique and adductor sling and also a little bit of glute med. And then you you pair that with that oblique dominant full extension crunch I was doing. And then after I did some full body stretching, now I didn't film this. I'm pulling this film from another day, but I want to actually discuss long hold passive stretching on the channel because it's something I've incorporated recently, uh, just trying to get more mobile for Muay Thai. And it has helped me tremendously. My lifts feel healthier than they've ever felt, especially my squats. And my depth is better than ever. And my body just feels better. Like I really don't care what people say as far as the scientific consensus goes. If you stretch, you're gonna feel healthier, period. Like I, it is astronomically helpful. And that actually could be a third tip for you guys that you should uh, 
uh, really honestly add in some passive stretching. How you do it with the proper breathing technique and ensuring you're doing it during off times, not before you're lifting. You wanna keep most of your workout, uh, pre-workout mobility stuff and, and movement preparation stuff, dynamic pre-workout, but post-workout and at home, you can do a lot of long passive stretching with really deep breaths to kind of release that CNS tension. But we'll talk about that more in a future videos. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll catch you guys.